How's our vital signs, you guys? Condition critical. That about sums up this patient's family history. Respiratory rate seems steady. He's part of a population that was nearly wiped off the planet, a species classified as endangered since 1976. But this individual Mexican wolf is doing just fine. He was captured minutes ago by members of the Mexican Wolf Interagency Field Team as part of its annual count and capture operation. We want to count the number of wild wolves we have in Arizona and New Mexico to be able to evaluate the reintroduction process. That process started in 1977 when the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service established a captive breeding program with just seven Mexican wolves. Two decades later, in 1998, the first captive bred wolves were released into the wild. The interagency field team has been managing this experimental population ever since. If it's like, all right, yeah, that's one, then the gunner's like, all right, well, let me get ready. It's a partnership that includes the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, Arizona Game and Fish, the Forest Service, Wildlife Services, and the White Mountain Apache Tribe. That's your first location, count them, and then you go to Panther Creek and try to catch her. There's a little bit of uh, open capture opportunity there. There are power lines through the area. In early 2017, biologists spent a dozen days counting and capturing wolves by helicopter. The key to finding them is this. By having working radio and satellite callers on wolves, we are able to go to the known wolf packs that we have. Wrapping the collars with tape of different colors and patterns helps biologists visually identify wolves in the wild. This is the collar from the last wolf we processed. That is Alpha Female 1333 of the Hoodoo Pack. We collared her as a pup in 2013 when she was just a few months old, about six months old. You can see it has a very small battery pack here. That battery pack is supposed to last about one year, but we got lucky and we got about three years of battery life out of it. So that took her from her transition as a pup from the blue stem pack to the alpha female of the hoodoo pack. So this little collar has helped us do a lot in tracking her and her pack. Logistically, you hit them on the way to Panther Creek, on the way to, yeah, that all makes sense, Mike. This is just the plane. Each day, the count and capture operation starts with a small airplane that uses radio telemetry to search for priority packs. Location of 33.724. There is a power line that runs east-west. Once located, the helicopter crew sets out to find them. For our capture priorities, we're looking at wolves that, that do not have radio collars or, or wolves that do have radio collars that have failed. The helicopter has the pilot, the dart gunner, and, and then a mugger. That person will actually get out and physically bring the wolf back to the helicopter. 33.755. When pursuing a wolf, the pilot does his best to give the dart gunner a clear shot. It's a dangerous operation, so everyone's on the lookout for potential hazards like power lines. The airplane keeps an eye on the helicopter from above. <clears throat> Apologize if I already asked this, but did we get an ID on the animal? And Mike Godwin maintains radio contact with both. 10-4, thanks, sir. When a wolf is darted, the team waits for the anesthesia to kick in. Then the mugger sets out to retrieve it. To verify I heard you correctly, the mugger was out. Yes, that's correct. The mugger is out. <laughs> and sometimes, if necessary, the, the dart gunner will get out and assist the mugger with the retrieval and recovery of the wolf back into the helicopter. They're 
Once the wolf is back in the helicopter, then they will fly that animal to the staging area or the processing area where the ground crew is, is prepared and, and readily waiting for the arrival of that wolf. Start a tiny bit lower so we still have a little more room. Susan Dix is one of the Wolf Project veterinarians. I'm monitoring anesthesia. I'm checking for health issues, I'm giving vaccines. We draw blood. We do disease surveillance testing and monitoring. We also bank a lot of it, and we also do genetics, uh, verifying that this animal is who we think she is, as well as that she's healthy, things like that. So this is gold. <laughs> we got a lot. 39.5 millimeters is her upper canine spread. Everyone's happy with her anesthetic state or vitals? Anybody noticing anything? No, it looks good. It was very smooth. The level of anesthesia of the animal was perfect. All the biometric data on the animal seemed very good. Uh, we collected a lot of data. We didn't have to rush. Uh, there were no human hazards. There were no animal hazards. It was a very good processing. The animal is placed in a crate after it has been processed and then it is allowed to recover in that crate under observation. And then when that animal is ready to be released, then it will be taken out into the field and released by a predetermined means. Our goal is to get the wolf back with its pack. And, and that can be a challenge based on the location of where it was captured. A lot of the releases this year were snowmobile releases. Hey, good job today, you guys. Incredible teamwork. Uh, Rick, congratulations. First wolf darted. What do we have for safety issues or just overall concerns? At the end of each day, there's a thorough debriefing. Eight wolves captured to total in Arizona so far. Seven, thank you. Eight's optimistic. Um, objectives for tomorrow, count blue stem again. We'll check Maverick, see where they're at, get some rest. Stay vigilant, stay sharp, let's not get complacent. We've got a lot ahead of us still. The interagency field team manages Mexican wolves all year long, and the year-end count is a valuable measure of its progress. Our minimum count for 2016 is 113 wolves in the wild, and that's in Arizona and New Mexico, and that's a minimum count. In other words, there were at least 113 Mexican wolves in the wild at the end of the count. This is the highest number since the start of the project in 1998. 2016 was a big year for small things. Biologists counted 50 wolf pups, and that doesn't include six captive-born pups like these that were placed into the litters of wild wolf packs. It's a process called cross-fostering or simply fostering. It involves taking wolf pups at a very young age from captivity and placing them into a wild wolf den to be raised wild. It was first attempted in Arizona in 2016. First in April, when two seven-day-old pups were placed with the Elkhorn pack. Hey, he's joining. He's in the pack. Then in May, two five-day-old pups were fostered into the Panther Creek pack. This is a female. Fostering has proven successful with red wolves back east. In Arizona, it's now used exclusively for adding genetic diversity to the wild Mexican wolf population. The alternative would be taking wolves from captivity that have a genetically diverse composition, but those wolves are adult wolves and they are, they are naive wolves. Because they're raised in captivity, they're habituated to humans and often exhibit nuisance behaviors in the wild. This experimental population of Mexican wolves is making progress thanks to decades of adaptive management and compassionate conservation. And while the 2016 count is encouraging, biologists are well aware that the road to recovery is rough. It's a very long, challenging process, and we just have to stay the steady path. And it has to be based in science, and it has to be based in social acceptance and cooperation with the stakeholders while recovering this species. The helicopter lifted off, and the entire crew is on the helicopter with a wolf. Copy that. 